everybody's familiar in one form or another with the Salem witch trials, or at least everybody who grew up in the States, you know, you heard those stories. Originally sounds like it's going to be a, a fun sort of a Halloween special, ends up more or less just a human rights tragedy. It's, uh, if only, many a child has said to their strange puppet monster that they worship, if only there were a fun one of these. And then the puppet monster, it blows the cake crumbs out of its ear and says, well, we'll sit down, I'll educate you. And it launches into the spiel, letting this young one know all about the entertainment wars of the past times. Says, it all started in 1624 when a young woman named Marjorie Smackinson founded the Academy of Theatrical Devastation. These were a band of merry pranksters who would invade dramaturgical spaces. People would be putting on, you know, they just got emailed the script for Titus Andronicus, and they're over there in their imagination planks, trying to be acorns, from the growing of which the people can hang out in the shade of a brilliant tale involving chowing down on involuntary cannibalism. They don't recognize the inherent motivation we all feel to staple a small images of feline arachnids all over the entrance to the house of worship. That was actually the genesis of, you know, you know, the founder of the Academy of Theatrical Devastation. Uh, people would go on a Sunday morning thinking, ah, oh, it's, it's Jesus time. And then they'd spot the fresh new abominations on the door, go in and, you know, the priest would do his whole, this is the body and the blood thing. And then at the end, any questions? And uh, a founder lady raised her hand and said, Father, I need you to walk me through these, these cuddly bugs outside. The father just sighs and says, uh, It's more of those avant-garde vandals. That has nothing to do with the body or the blood. That one just sort of happened. Founder lady doesn't, you know, her hand goes straight back up into the air. Priest rolls his eyes a bit and says, Yes, founder lady, what's up? And Founder Lady goes, but isn't, isn't Body Blood Man kind of the one who either does or permits the doing of all things? What is there in the Bible that prepares us for arachno kitties? Priest just, uh, Priest thinks I need this over with, and he says, 1 Thessalonians 5.12. She goes home and reads that, and at first seems like it's not relevant, but then she thinks, wait a minute, if you insert the concept of eight-legged cats into the context of this, then yeah, you know what? I need to go mess with theater folk. So they're trying to get Titus Andronicus popping. American audiences aren't quite ready for it yet. It's like if the Beatles had broken just 10 years too early, people would be like, I don't, I don't get it. This is just very friendly Brits who would like to hold my hand. But the opening night crowd at a theater that's getting emails from William Shakespeare, they're okay with things not adding up just yet. They don't need to solve the equation. They just like the numbers. But then, the ATD, they come in, and they're wearing very large socks for very fat-footed individuals, over their head with little eye slits torn in. Cartoon smile on cardboard, clutched in either hand, and they walk up and down the aisles, looking at people and saying, Biffity Hom Hom? Over and over again. They don't know, the, the viewers, whether or not this is just part of Shakespeare's vision. Haven't seen a Shakespeare play before. This is the first one that's made it to these shores. There could absolutely be something in the script where people come up to you, go biffity hom hom. Beyond which, the Brits have always had kind of wacky slang. That could just be them asking if we're enjoying the show. It does feel like there's an inquisitive intonation there. And up to 40% of the theatergoers looked at these ATD devils and just went, hmm, biffity-hom-hom. -hom. 
And the reviews for Titus Andronicus, they were split down the middle mixed. And the people who enjoyed it were the ones at the Biffity Hom Hom show. So the actual theater troupe, they're getting pretty angry. They're getting upstaged by outsiders who seem like they want to turn into dolls. So they're like, look, if you want a real intellectual, artistic experience, you've got to come to our show and focus on the stage. It's the friggin' 1600s. The fourth wall has not yet sustained enough damage for us to bring in clown folk in disguise to spout nonsense at you. Critics didn't like that. Critics had a clapback piece in the next edition of the Gazette. And they said, if Rando's coming in and proves your play, your play sucks. So the troop goes, all right, you want, you know what, we're going to make some tweaks. Apologies to Willie. Willie the Shakes. So how did they go about freshening it up? Good question. Thank you so much for asking it. It is they put all the characters in national costumes. Shirts that looked like flags. This didn't change anything. Nobody liked it more or less because of it. Just a couple of people in the crowd went, oh, that's Peru. Now what this did do is it got the poli sci mofos involved. There is some overlap between the poli sci people and the avant-garde art set. It's not good overlap. It's the people who, you know, they eat at a brunch joint and there's more butter than they expected on the wheat toast. And they put together a, a reading of that, an interpretation, where it's like, obviously these people favor a return to the days of Hammurabi. They have an anti-nostril agenda, want all the nostrils plugged up with a mixture of foam, rubber, and banana paste. And if you don't see that, then, oh, you know, you're one of those bad-faith losers who's like, I'm apolitical. You're not apolitical. You just tacitly approve of nostril loss. And then the people who, who actually just don't care are like, it's toast. What are you talking about? Then poli sci avant-garde theater dilettante man it just shakes his head and turns to his Twitter followers and says, Don't let this be you. Educate yourself. It's not just toast. Aesthetics matter. You better believe the ATD got involved in this. They went sneaking into the newspaper headquarters where toast consumption man works slipping into his office while he's down at the poop laboratory after having, you know, something more substantial than toast, trying to make a, a socioeconomic statement out of it, and he's all like, "Ah, oh, I'll be writing for weeks off this bowel movement. They go in, they alter his next article. All of a sudden, it sounds like he believes scrambled eggs or something to do with trying to control the birth rate. He's like, I don't think that. I don't think that at all. But he's saying it to himself. As the paper is already out among the public. It's too late now. The same readers who thought Toast was about pre-revolutionary monarchy love and cyborgism. Going to the brunch joint and saying, I demand to see all of your robots. The crown thanks you for your robots. And the chef's like, what? Huh? And they just wink at him and then leave like they're in on something together. They were just hunting for information. They want to be able to go down to the, the local squad car, ring the car bell, and then the mail slot opens and they can stick part of their mouth in and go, we got cyborgs. But it didn't work because it isn't true. But when has that ever stopped anybody? So now, this guy is the second victim. Toast Consumption Man and Titus Andronicus Yankees, they have felt the wrath of the ATD. And at this point, the child shifts its weight slightly on the purple cushion atop which it sits, and the frilly bits on the cushion are tickly on their foot, because their shoe came off because they were like, let me play with footwear as they listen to the story. 
The puppet monster didn't mind, though. But anyway, Puppet continues and explains that now, over-politicization, toast-consumer, and Shakespeare Yankees are... They're joining forces. They're like, we've been messed with in strange fashions. Let's, let's put our brains together and see if we can't come up with some sort of a path that we can hew out of the concrete of our mutual pain. So they do that. It's all right. At first. But then the internal clashes begin. After rehearsal, it's like, oh, now this bit where the person's biting a stick and using it to write in the sand. You do realize that this is Shakespeare saying we need to replace the current queen with a very stale cupcake, let the bugs it attracts make all of our decisions, right? And the director, she says, absolutely not. This represents the necessity of art in our... It, it's like food to us. We need the words to go into and come out of our mouths. In politics, Toaster goes, Oh, you're part of the problem. You gotta own up to your complicity in this impending cupcake doom. Director Lady says, No, you're just anti-art. You think that, uh, that the pursuits of art are bad. And they're all quibbling now. The show is getting strange on its own because the actors have fully lost their minds from debating baked goods. Meanwhile, this blowhard is using his column to write pseudo scripts starring a magic scarecrow named Strawman the Magnificent because actually engaging with art requires him to observe beliefs other than his own. That's not comfortable. And this is real fun for a while, for the ATD, until it isn't. And then they say, all right, it's time for the coup de gras. And what's their coup look like? Well, it looks like going into the town square with copies of the Gazette paper mache into cones that they've affixed to their own noses. And they got a fork in the left hand and a baton in the right hand, and they spin around very slowly and then everybody learns the truth that when intellectuals fight intellectuals only stupid things happen and that the puppet says closing the scripture and cracking its cheekbones is the story of the entertainment wars the child stands up from the purple cushion and says what does that have to do with the witch trials and the puppet says, oh, you're, you, you, you don't see the connection. Or is it that you don't want to see the connection? You're part of the problem. You're complicit. Child flips the puppet off and goes home. Sits down on the couch. Mom asks, how was monstrous daycare? Child just says, you know what, Mom? It was okay. Because they don't want to get into it. They will someday describe it to a therapist. And that's for the best. You know, I think... Not being super messed up by puppets who will tell you dark truths about our past, it's one option. But the other option is being messed up by puppets who, etc. And if you've been feeling a little bit listless, a bit down lately, figure out which of these you've gone with in life. Go give the other one a shot. Now, I don't know that you're going to enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy it, but do it anyway because it's my suggestion, and it's a sign of respect to me when, when you follow my bad advice.